Batman, Beetlejuice, Birdman. Battlestar Galactica. Through his completely insane 45 year career, Michael Keaton has played his fair share of depraved lunatics and deranged sociopaths. Although initially starting out as a comedic actor, Keaton tapped into a darkness through his work with Tim Burton that would go on to inform much of his career to follow. Now, with his highly anticipated return to his most iconic role as the Cape Crusader in 2023's The Flash, I thought it might be interesting to revisit an often forgotten Keaton performance as another wealthy, psychologically tortured, animal-themed mass maniac with deep-seated parental trauma as Trip Larson in King of the Hill's darkest episode, Pygmalion. Initially conceived as a non-canon Halloween episode for season 5, kind of in the vein of a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, which was itself a pretty out there concept for the much more grounded King of the Hill to begin with, due to the dark nature of the episode, its release would be delayed two years until the show's seventh season, months after its Halloween setting, randomly airing in the middle of January 2003, and presented as an in-canon story in the King of the Hill universe. Based on the Greek myth of Pygmalion, about a sculptor who creates and falls in love with his own statue based on his idealized version of a perfect woman, to which the gods respond by saying, that's not creepy at all, and just bring her to life for him with no moral or consequences whatsoever, because that is exactly the kind of sh Greek gods are way into. Our story centers around the extremely impressionable character of Luan as the proverbial lump of clay caught between two opposing forces vying to mold her future. We were in the neighborhood and thought you might like some of my brown Betty. We can also discuss my Luann. Now before diving too deep into this episode, I think it's important to acknowledge the significance of Peggy and Luann's relationship through the series up to this point, and how it differs from what's presented in Pygmalion. The Hills take in Luann at the start of the series from what seems to have been a pretty horrifying situation at home, and although usually played in the background of most episodes, Peggy and Luann pretty instantly form a surrogate mother-daughter relationship, with the Hills serving as a grounding force to help Luann through her progression into adulthood, and Peggy specifically acting as a loving protector, offering encouragement and a stable foundation for Luann to rely on as she prepares to enter the next phase in her life. All of this we'll be addressing further in a future video about Luann and the role of the Plather family in the Greater King of the Hill mythology. Oh yeah! However, by this point in the show's history, Peggy's character had become a lot less level-headed and a lot more flanderized to some of her less charming characteristics, leading to our central conflict at the start of the episode, where instead of acting like a guiding force for Luann, Peggy just up and decides to try to take full control of her life, getting her fired from her job at Rattlesnakes by unnecessarily escalating a work conflict. And you have just lost yourself a waitress. She quits. Well, now, wait a minute. I wasn't gonna fire her. And later insisting she take a class she has little to no interest in. It would be really nice if sometimes you could ask me when you make decisions about my life. You're right. Would you like to go at seven or at nine? Mm, seven. I'm sorry, that won't work for me. Although this kind of behavior isn't out of the ordinary within the character dynamics of King of the Hill, it's usually relegated to more two-dimensional characters, or as a means to rein in the cartoonish buffoonery that generally befalls Hank and the Alley Gang, and really most specifically Bill. I'd like to make a point. I already made your point, Bill. We don't like it. Although Bill is probably one of the most pathetic characters in television history that kind of both needs and thrives on these kind of structured dynamics due to his own personal trauma. You know, Bill, if I'm always speaking for you and I'm always right, that means you're always right too, doesn't it? Well, uh... It does. It, it does. It does! How do you like that? I'm always right! As one of the few characters with a long-term character arc, a lot of Luann's stories tend to have an added level of depth that takes great care in her personal autonomy as she tries to navigate her life into adulthood, which makes watching her greatest ally in Peggy stomp all over that at the start of the episode hit a lot different than what we're used to between Hank and his gang of knuckleheads. Quit it, knucklehead! The jaws ain't for that! <laughs> this leads us to the learning annex, where Peggy had previously acquired some of her freshest and funkiest skills. I learned how to scratch! No! <laughs> and cut and wipe. And where we first meet Arlen's premier hog farming magnate, Michael Keaton as Trip Larson. Trip, him! Trip takes an immediate interest in Luann, and despite their interactions initially being framed as a whirlwind love story, there are about a million red flags that start popping up and just get creepier as they start to stack up throughout the episode. Outside of the fact that he's clearly in his mid to late 40s inviting a young girl on a job interview at his house that turns out to be a date. That is not a proper way to even his initial interactions with Luann have weird predatory overtones relating to some warped sense of purity. You know, you have that special, I don't know, unspoiled quality. You are not stupid. You're ignorant. That just means you haven't had the chance to learn all the wrong things. No one has ever realized how ignorant you truly are. 
not to mention the downright ghoulish manner in which he casually pontificates on pork production. We kill more pigs than, well, pig hepatitis. Well, see, that's the beauty of pork. It rinses off clean. Looks like you could eat it with a spoon. Just give me five years and you will. Hank catches wind of the situation and attempts to interject in what leads to maybe the most Hank Hill interaction ever. Luann, sometimes men aren't interested in what they say they're interested in. To put it bluntly, they're more interested in something else. Oh, you mean sex. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. But after meeting Trip, is just as easily swayed by his wealth and charm. Well, that's one of the eight uses of propane I haven't experienced firsthand. It's only when Hank's riding in the hot air balloon that we see Tripp's first mean streak emerge as he deliberately decides to threaten Peggy with Hank's safety. Oh. Although Peggy has a long history of being easily manipulated and would likely be no match for Tripp's charismatic charm, he instead chooses to actively antagonize her, expertly driving a wedge between her and Luann. I am a proud ignorant woman and leading Luann right into his arms at which point things go completely off the rails. Trip forcibly moves all of her belongings to his estate, destroys all of her clothes in place of his own preferred wardrobe, and dyes her hair during what's probably a totally normal 14 hour nap and not a drug induced coma. I'll have Blanca bring you up a warm glass of milk, okay? Okay. Finish it all. It's revealed that Trip has a deep-seated childhood obsession with a Larson's Pork Products girl and is slowly molding Luann into her image. Although Luann is initially completely horrified, as one would be, Trip smooths things over with the promise of a lavish Halloween party. Ready to show the world just how happy we are. Hank and Peggy arrive in style, and we get a bunch of great superhero costume cameos, a nod to an earlier season Halloween episode, and this really fun cauldron costume here. Luann introduces the Hills to Trip's maid Blanca, who bears a striking resemblance to John Turturro, before being whisked away to witness the final form of Trip's transformation as he maniacally reveals his deranged plan. Will you do me the great honor of marrying him? We can be the family in the picture. You, him, and me. <laughs> Luann reasonably gets the f*** out of the Dodge with Trip and Peggy in hot pursuit, leading to a final showdown in the processing warehouse where Trip ultimately meets his gruesome demise, but not before his deep-seated delusions are momentarily lifted in its final moments. I can suddenly think clearly. The voices have left my head. What am I doing on a pig costume? This episode has since become infamous for not only its extremely dark content, but also its bafflingly cavalier wrap-up to a situation of two of our main characters being involved in a gruesome killing that would never be mentioned again. It's one of the few times where the show doesn't wrap everything up in a heartfelt, grounded, or comforting way that really adds to how unsettling and downright jarring this ending would come to be revered in the King of the Hill fan community, even spawning rumors of lost footage of Tripp's mangled corpse being edited out of the episode after its first airing that seem to have since been proven as false. Peggy's tonal change with Luann in recapping the events they just witnessed I think is the real clincher in the overall feeling of uneasiness for most viewers. Honey. Trip had a mental breakdown and is now a sausage. That's not a better place. But you handled the situation very well. Although this might seem overly callous to the nature of the situation they just experienced, in a way, I feel like it makes a lot of sense in the context of their relationship. Although Luann does show herself to be a strong character throughout the series, fully capable of overcoming adversity, she's also still framed as a very vulnerable and childlike character who's been through more than her fair share of adversity since her time with the Hills. I think Peggy glossing over the tragedy and redirecting the incident as a triumph to Luann's sense of personal autonomy is her way of trying to protect Luann, and an attempt to spare her of the added trauma of another near-death experience and loss of her romantic partner, which would likely have been greatly intensified with the involvement of a deranged millionaire pigman being slaughtered through a meat processing conveyor belt before her very eyes. So really, it's a happy ending. Happy enough. Keaton's performance as Batman, alternating between a cool, nonchalant demeanor, a meticulous yet damaged adult persona, everything has a small flaw or imperfection, drives me mad, and an out of control crazed maniac within the same role. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. I think really informs his portrayal of Trip Larson in Pygmalion. This, however, would not be Keaton's last time providing a nuanced portrayal of a tormented cartoon pig, as he would go on to voice the titular character in the 2005 American release of 1992 Miyazaki classic Porco Rosso just two years later. 
although it's unlikely any reference to Pygmalion would ever appear in the much-anticipated King of the Hill revival currently in production, let alone any possibility of Keaton having even the slimmest of chance of reprising the now-long-deceased character, with news of James Gunn's new Batman reboot taking inspiration from Grant Morrison's initial Batman and Robin run from 2009, and Keaton's great proficiency in playing villains and psychopaths over the years, there's one character that's been kicking around the DC Universe ever since that may be the perfect fit for Michael Keaton's Pygmalion return in the next iteration of the Batman universe. Universe. Or they could just keep making Keaton Batman movies. People love those. Give me Batman 5 with Scarecrow and all the old returning villains. Give me Keaton Kingdom Come. Just give me more old Batman. And on that note, I hope you've enjoyed the first installment of our new series, Beyond Batman, where we explore the vast and often baffling roles of our favorite Batman performers beyond their time as the Cape Crusader. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for our upcoming video on the wacky sitcom career of beloved Batman voice actor Kevin Conroy in The Office? Also, feel free to check out our video on the comprehensive history of music in King of the Hill and more videos to come exploring the series as a whole, and consider donating to our Patreon to help us make more in the future. Hey, that's a good idea. Sounds fun. Thanks again for watching. The new Wendy's Baconator is upon us! The new Wendy's Baconator! We dare you to try it! You are not stupid. You're ignorant. Am I supposed to kill this pig? Life is a series of compromises. We kill more pigs than... Well, pig hepatitis. Now you want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. That's all, folks.